Hi again. In this video, we're going to have a look at concerts, how to photograph concerts, what you'll need, the things you need to take with you, and the settings for your camera, and all that kind of thing that, um, that you'll need to think about when, um, when shooting uh, a live performer and a concert venue. So the first thing is, um, you literally just can't turn up to a concert and photograph it. You need to plan for these exercises, and there are things you need to do to achieve that. The first thing is, um, you, you are not going to be able to turn up to a concert with a DSLR camera, with a professional looking camera, and just start taking photographs. Um, as, a, as a ticket um, buyer, you, you will be allowed to take in um, probably a cell phone, you may get away with a, a small camera, you might get away with a mirrorless camera, um, but you'll not get away with any kind of uh, professional looking camera and you certainly won't get away with any kind of large lenses. So if you want to take photographs of, of concert that, um, that stand out from the rest and look more professional, then you are going to need some kind of special uh, permission from, um, from the organizers to, to do that. To do that, um, it's normally the promoter that you would need to contact and you can't just um, you know, turn up with your camera and say, hey, can I take some photographs? You've got to do all this way, way in advance. So the thing to do is um, obviously find yourself uh, a, a concert you want to photograph. Um, there are websites, obviously, you can look at uh, bands' websites, you look at venue websites, you look at um, concert listings, all that kind of stuff. And from there, you need to be finding the promoter. Now, once you find the promoter, you need to apply for um, a press pass or what is commonly referred to as a photo pass. Um, they're not easy to get and you certainly won't get one just by writing to these people and saying, hey, come on, let me come and take some photographs. You will need a reason, you know, you'll need to engage yourself with um, a, a local magazine or a newspaper or something like that and get and get them on board so that um, so that, that you can use your, your images uh, with them and, and give yourself a reason to be at that concert because otherwise that you're not going to get in you can't go because you're a fan that just isn't going to happen and once you apply to these people um, hopefully they'll they'll come back to you and they'll say yes you know we'll, we'll let you come and photograph the concert they they may well say you know we want the images and, and we'd like license for those images to use them for the artist to promote the band in the future to promote the venue or whatever and you know don't 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 be silly about it just just give those images uh, to those people because you know they they they're allowing you to come and photograph um, their concert the things you'll need um, once you get there is, uh, first of all, you, when you get there, you'll need to go to the box office and uh, there will be a list. And if you've done everything right, you will be on that list. And, w and this is the first thing you'll need. So the first thing you'll need is a little plastic wallet like this, because what, what these venues will give you will be a small piece of paper like this um, or something similar to this. And um, this one's actually uh, got, got a sticky back to it. Um, you, so you could stick it on, but they don't all have a sticky back. Um, and they'll just give you that and they'll expect you to pop that into your uh, pop that into your little pouch and uh, stick it around your neck basically so that they know who you are. That will allow you to get into areas where the ticket paying public haven't necessarily got access to go to. Not necessarily backstage, uh, backstage is not normally that exciting anyway, but certainly down the side of the stage and, and, and beyond those barriers at the front of the concert. Um, you can get these uh, these little wallets, um, usual kind of places, Amazon, eBay, they cost about a pound each or so. Um, they're a little bit bigger than normal AD, ID wallets, but uh, you can get them, they are, they are very inexpensive. Stick them around your neck and, and away you go. The second thing you'll, you'll find uh, when you get in there is um, there'll, be, there'll be a set of, of new rules and you'll need to talk to maybe the security, maybe the people at the box office, just to find out what the concert uh, rules are. So the first thing is, um, uh, you know, where you can shoot, where you can't shoot. They, they normally ha refer to this area called the pit, which is the area in front of the stage, um, between the, the, the end of the stage and where, and where the crowd starts. There's normally an area. To be fair, it's probably not much wider than this desk, um, and there might be some security in there as well, um, and that's what they refer to as the pit, the area directly in front of that stage. Um, and rules vary from venue to venue. They are set by the venue, and uh, they're normally three songs, so you will probably be invited to go into the pit to photograph um, the artist from the pit, um, and you'll photograph three songs, uh, as many pictures as you like, and then, and then you're out. Um, if there's multiple bands on in one evening, then there may be different rules, different songs that photographers can go in and photograph. Um, there may well be a number of photographers in the area, and it'll be, you'll be jostling for position just a little bit. Talk to security. Um, 
they, they really are there um, not only to protect people but also to help um, you know do what they say but listen to what they say because they'll give you some sound advice if you've not been to a particular venue before um, and if they tell you to do something do it I mean photographers haven't got a bad name in, in these venues but sometimes some sort of photographers don't always follow those rules and can create a bit of a bad a bad name for uh, for photographers so you know get friendly with with the with the, uh, the security guys that they, they will help you they'll give you a bit of advice on where you can go where you can't go um, and what you can and can't do things that um, at a practical level things that you will need let's go on to camera gear um, you you do not want to turn up with one of these if you think you're going to take your backpack with all your photograph gear in it, it ain't happening. Because as I said a few moments ago, the I just chuck that down there out of the way. Um, the pit is not wide. It is an area probably as width of this desk, um, and there'll be potentially quite a few people kicking around in there. You ain't going to have time to be messing about with um, a, a big rucksack full of camera gear. You need something small. You need something quite easy. You can just chuck off your shoulder. Maybe not even take into the pit. Maybe leave in the, in the side, um, in the wings at the side before you before you do that. I've done that a couple of times, and that works quite fine. Um, for me, that's the biggest bag I would ever take um, uh, to a concert. Um, this is a, a, a Billingham Hadley one. It's absolutely perfect for this uh, for this kind of job. Um, and in here is all the stuff you will ever need for a concert. If you've not been to a concert before and you don't know the venue, then you know you'll be wanting to take probably a little bit more than you would do if you know the venue be and you've been before. So let's take a look at what you're going to want to take with you. First of all, you are going to need a DSLR camera. Now you don't have to have a DSLR camera, but um, DSLR um, is going to be the, the best the best job. And ideally, you want a full frame. This is a, a Nikon D750 perfect for, for concert photography full frame um, sensor going to get lots of light onto that sensor because don't forget you are going to be shooting in what is inevitably a dark space with strange lights flashing all over the place to brighten the brighten the, uh, the scene up for you but you are shooting in a dark room so the, the more light you can get onto that sensor the absolute better and a full frame sensor is, is really going to help there's going to be three lenses that three lenses that you might want to have with you first of all um, the, the one that's on this camera at the moment, absolutely stock for, for concert photography, 2470 2.8. 2.8, nice, nice and wide aperture. That's a lot of lighting, managed the depth of field a little bit, but uh, the 2470 2.8 is, is what I would recommend for, for using day in, day out at a concert, um, working in that pit, looking at the, uh, at the artist taking, taking the images. If you're gonna to want to um, take a picture, maybe it's a little bit wider, um, looking across uh, maybe the more of the stage then you want to go on a wide angle lens now i've got uh, i use here a tamron this is a 2.8 once again um, this is a, a 15 to 30 tamron lens um, absolutely great lens and if you're in the pit and you want to take a wider image then uh, that's the uh, that's the lens for you however remember you're not you're not alone in that environment and there will be other people kicking around and do you want to be standing there changing lenses messing about before you go in so think about the images you want to take before you start taking the pictures before you get into that space the third thing you might want is a longer lens um, there are some uh, venues that will let you shoot from further away maybe from around the sound stage maybe from a balcony at the back um, and for those situations uh, a longer lens would be absolutely perfect and uh, and this once again is, is a great lens it's a 2.8 again this is the this is a, a 70 to 200 um, 28 so the kind of the, the typical trilogy of lenses really your wide your, your middle and then uh, your longer lens if you've been to the venue before and you know you're only allowed in the pit and the, the artist comes quite close to the edge of the pit, then you can leave that one, leave that one behind. If you know that um, it's just one person and just one singer, for example, and they're not going to be running around the, the, the um, stage too much, then you might want to just ditch your, your uh, wide angle. But if you've never been anywhere before and it's your first uh, shoot in a particular venue, I'd be taking all three. And the reason I use this bag is because literally that's all that goes in it. Um, all three of those lenses will just go quite nicely in that bag. I'm not selling anything for Billingham, but uh, because there are other brands that do similar bags, there's three, two lenses, and your camera slops in the middle, and oh, excuse me, and you're absolutely ready to go with um, with your concert. You'll notice that there's one thing that I haven't got in there, and that's a flash. 
um, you will not be allowed to use a flash as a photographer. So as a consequence of that, you need to be shooting wide open, which is why all these lenses are f2.8. Getting on to some of the settings that you're going to be taking pictures with. So let's just run through the settings of the, of the camera. Um, this is Nikon, obviously, but it, it could well be, let's just get that out of the way, it could well be a Canon or a Sony or anything else. Um, it's a full frame, and as I said before, full frame is, is the best um, for this kind of situation because it is going to be dark and you want as much light in there as possible. Taking the pictures, um, you're going to want to be in manual mode. Manual mode is going to be king in this situation. You don't want the camera making any decisions, uh, otherwise you, you can end up with anything. So let make all the decisions yourself. And these are the settings that I would recommend. So shutter speed. You want to be shooting around about one two hundredth of a second um, as a minimum. Faster if you can get away with it. If you get any slower, you are going to start to get blur from uh, from the performing artists as, as they move around the stage. So I would say as a minimum, you know, start off at, at uh, one two hundredth of a second. If you can push it up to two fifty, three hundred, four hundred, whatever, then uh, absolutely fine. Aperture, you want to be absolutely wide open. F two point eight, get as much light into that camera as you possibly can. So there are your first two settings. Um, obviously, that's not going to, be, going to give you a good exposure. So you do need something just to, to try and make that exposure for you. And you can do that automatically. And what I would do is I would pop my ISO onto automatic. Try and give it a ceiling that you're comfortable with, um, but put your ISO on automatic and monitor it as you're taking the photograph. See what you're getting and then you'll start to understand whether you can then start to maybe play with the aperture or play with the shutter speed a little bit so you can improve your pictures. But when you first get going, um, I would start wide open, 200th of a second, I auto automatic ISO. White balance, you can leave it on automatic. Um, it doesn't really matter. You can, you can fix that in post if you get any strange colors starting to come through. So auto white balance as well. Um, for the focusing system, I will pop it onto continuous autofocus. I tend to go for quite a small group in the middle. So I, on the, on the Nikon, uh, I use nine point uh, grouped autofocus um, in the middle of the frame um, on a continuous uh, setting so that it's continually hunting for that, um, for that right focus point. And it, and it generally works um, really well. Let's look at a couple of pictures and uh, and just see some of the settings that uh, that we've that we've used there. So first one here, um, this is a chap called Dan Bolton, and uh, shot him a, a little while ago. And you'll see that for this image, um, we've got aperture f 2.8, um, right at that starting point. I've actually pushed him down to one hundredth of a second because actually Dan wasn't wasn't moving that much. He was quite static when he was uh, when he was singing. And uh, my ISO for this shot was uh, six forty. And the focal length was uh, 48 mil, so I was using that 24 70 mil lens, and it was absolutely perfect. Um, you can see, obviously, I'm in the pit there. I'm just a little bit below him, but be, being below him allows me to just get some of that equipment in uh, in, in the frame as well. You'll see there are areas of quite quite darkness, and you do get that in in these images. You get you get quite a lot of darkness and then quite a lot of brightness. Here's, here's another one of Dan, and this time with uh, the lights that have flipped over to red. I was in the same place. Uh, I, I didn't move too much um, for for this next shot. Um, I believe I think it was a different song. But once again, I'm at 2.8. This is uh, one one hundred of a second. And this time, I, I'd opened up a little bit to 36 mil, um, and and also because it was a little bit darker, probably because of those red lights opened uh, opened my eyes so it was automatic anyway but that pushed pushed itself up to uh, 1600. In comparison um, another artist uh, Howard Jones um, he, he's uh, he's a great singer but obviously um, you know there to take photographs this picture here uh, I was playing around I, I managed to uh, get my aperture down to 6.3 um, I was, I was comfortable with that because I wanted some detail in the background uh, rather than, than blur from a 2.8 lens. Um, and once again, my shutter speed was bang on 250 of a second. He was moving quite a bit, was Howard, um, quite an energetic gentleman. And uh, what, what that did is that pushed my ISO up to 5,000. I'm getting to that range where I'm starting to get a little bit uncomfortable at 5,000. Um, and my focal lens was 38mm. Uh, final, final shot I'll show you. This was another one of Howard right in front of him. Um, uh, as he was uh, behind his keyboard. So this is another one at 6.3, one two hundred fifty of a second. To get everything I wanted there, I had to open up to 24 mil, as wide as my 2470 would go. And that gave me an ISO of 8,000. And I was initially a little bit worried with 8,000. That is a lot of, um, 
a lot of ISO. Um, but on a full frame camera, you can get away with that in certain circumstances. And actually the image came out quite well. There was a bit of noise. I could get rid of it a little quite easily. Um, and it gave me the image that, that I was absolutely after. Um, so that's about it. They're, they're the settings and, and that's, um, that's what you generally do with, uh, with content photography. Um, so the key things really once again are, you know, be nice to people, um, respect all the staff that are there. If they ask you to do something, do it generally without question. Um, you know, they, they will help you, but uh, don't annoy them because uh, it'll just give you a bad name. And there's a small community that do this kind of stuff and you'll find it very difficult to get into uh, other concerts in the future because you, that, your name will start to resonate. Um, you know, don't take every piece of kit you own. Don't take a flash, you know, just take the absolute minimum that you think you're going to need. Shoot away, share your images with, uh, with the artists, with the, with the promoters. Um, you'll need the backing of a, of a newspaper or something to get in there in the first place. Um, but that's it. Um, I hope you've, uh, you've enjoyed this video and I hope it's given you some useful uh, tips and tricks to, uh, to, to help you get going along the, the lines of concert photography. Um, we do have other videos uh, on our channel so please do subscribe to our channel. There's a little button down there that somewhere, over there somewhere, you can, you can press the button, subscribe um, and, uh, and get, uh, get notified of all the uh, other videos as we, as we make them live. Um, but for this video, that's it. Thanks for watching and we'll uh, see you next time.